Hello, my name is Mr. Asprey, and I've got another tricky question for you today. And we have, um, it's a trig modeling question using the harmonic form. So I love these questions. Uh, let's get into it. So, in fact, I know a shortcut here. Some people might want to expand this out using the compound angle formula and then compare coefficients and then solve for r and theta. I don't bother doing that because I know a little shortcut which works every time. And that is, if you are converting into cos, then you must label the cos coefficient a. And if you are converting into sine, you would label the sine coefficient a. And therefore, in this case, because we are converting into cos, we've labeled the cos coefficient a, then we're going to label this one b. Um, we're not going to be concerned about the minus sign here because we know that when we do actually do the compound formula for cos, the sign swips, swaps over. So because it's a plus there, it, it needs to be a minus there for this to work. So I'm not concerned about the minus sign. I'm just looking at the 5 and the 3. And then, remarkably, r is always the square root of a squared plus b squared, um, which is equal to, in this case, the square root of uh, 5 squared plus 3 squared, which is equal to the square root of 34. And theta, sorry, theta, alpha is always equal to tan to the minus 1 of b over a. So in this case, we just put this into our calculator and we get 0 0.54, um, 0, 0,04. Perfect. Uh, and that's it. So, I mean, if you know this method, I mean, it generally can be the easiest three marks on your whole paper. Um, so those are the two values that we need to show. Um, okay, great. So now we need to apply that. Um, and this is the, the tricky part. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to try and write out our formula for H using the harmonic form that we have found in part A. So that's just always just the first step, really. Whenever you see this type of question, of which they are quite formulaic, you need to write out the formula, which is going to be 6 plus... Now, if we look at these coefficients here, we've got 2.5 and we've got minus 1.5. How do they differ from what we had up here? Well, these are clearly half of what we had up here, aren't they? So we need to half our harmonic form expression, which is root 34 is r. Uh, so that is, that's r, root 34. Um, cos, that's going to stay the same. Theta, well, theta has changed significantly because theta comes from here, which is in fact now equal to this. So our theta needs to be swapped out with 4 pi t over 25. And then they will be the same. So we will go for 4 pi t over 25 and then plus, so that's the blue part, and then plus this thing here, which is, um, uh, oh no, I've used my two favorite colors. What's next? We go with pink, alpha. Okay, so alpha, and we know what alpha is. We worked it out already. It's 0 0.5404, and that's the pink part. Okay, so uh, there we have it. And let, I just love these colours, so let's just make that yellow because it's there. And now it's perfect. Look, that is just absolutely perfect. And then the only difference is we have to times it by a half because the coefficients were 2.5 and minus 1.5 rather than 5 and minus 3. Beautiful. Okay, so we've got it in the, the form that we want it in. Now, what on earth are they actually asking us? Um, important to note, t is the number of hours after midday. That's always tricky. Can trick us. Can tri trip us up. Also, this model is only going to work for 12 hours, so it's going to work from midday to midnight. 
Um, it says, calculate the times at which the model predicts that the height of the seawater on the harbour wall will be 4.6. Okay, so we can scroll down here. And we can now try and find when the height is 4.6. So we're going to set that equal to this. And then we're going to need to solve for the time. Okay. So this is going to... Okay, so let's let's rearrange for cos as the subject. So cos of this, let's rearrange this. <clears throat> so the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to minus 6. So this 6 goes to that side. Um, we're going to then divide by a half root 34. Okay, perfect. So that can just go into our calculator so we can actually get that value. Okay, so let's just write it out as minus 0 0.4801. Uh, 2. Annoying. Okay, fine. So now what we're going to need to do is take inverse cos of both sides. So this will give us 4 pi t over 25 plus 0 0.504 uh, is equal to inverse cos of this number here. And then we can actually find what that is by doing the inverse cos of the exact value. We're going to want our calculator in radian mode though. So answer equals and we get our first solution for 4 pi t over 25 plus 0 0.5404. Uh, and it looks like um, this, so let's go with um, 17. Okay, now, critical. As soon as you do inverse cos or inverse tan or inverse sine on your calculator, I implore you to then go and find the second solution before you do anything else. So the second solution for cos is 360 minus the first, or in radians, which we are in, is 2 pi minus that answer. So your, that answer is already in your calculator, so don't so do it straight away, and we get this. Okay. Now, perhaps we may even need another answer. Who knows? Well we can find out if we do need another answer. What we can do is we can take the range and because we are solving for not just t initially, the input function into the cosine is this. So we can manipulate the range by timesing through by 4 pi over 25 and then adding on 0 0.504. Oh, I've just realized that I have made a slight mistake. Uh. But I don't, I don't, it, doesn't, it doesn't affect anything, does it? Because we've not actually used this here. I've just copied it down wrong, which is absolutely fine. You guys are going to forgive me. And you're all going to be all fine with that. Absolutely fine. Okay. Anyway, what we were saying is let's just change this range up here. Let's change it. So this will be 0 0.5404 is less than or equal to 4 pi t over 25 plus 0 0.5404 is less than... And then we need to times 12. We need to, we need to put 12 through that, um, through that. So we do 12 times 4 pi um, over 25 plus 0 0.5404. Okay. Um, so that goes up to 6.57. Fine. Now the question is, I've got two solutions so far. 
Do I need another one? Well, both of these are in the range. This is good. To find the next solution, I would add on 2 pi to this one. I think this is going to be out of the range and therefore not required. Now you may say, what a waste of time, Mr. Asprey. Why did you bother doing that? Well, I want to be sure that I've got all the solutions. Okay, I don't want to miss out any. And in fact, this one is no good because it is bigger than this. So it's not in the range for this particular input. So that one could go. So these are the two, and I know that now for certain, so I can feel confident that I'm going to get the answer right. Okay. Okay, so we are we know what we we know what we know. Um, so we're going to take this guy, and we're then going to run it through to find t. So we are going to, in fact, what I could do is I can say t is equal to. I can write out this so you know exactly what I'm doing. I'm minusing zero point five four zero four. I'm then going to divide it by four pi over twenty five. And then I'm going to do exactly the same for this one as well. I'm going to minus 0 0.5404. I'm going to go all over 4 pi over 25. And that is going to isolate and find t. And I'll do that on my calculator now. OK, I've done that. And I've got two values for t. The question does ask, though, for the times. Again, another thing to try and trip you up. So essentially, what the time of the day to the nearest minute. And remember what we said before, that this is the time after midday. So three hours and that certain amount of minutes past midday. Well, what we could do is we could take the number of minutes, so just isolate that, um, which looks like this, and times that by 60. And that gives us 2. Um, Seven six. So that that decimal there, sorry, is the is uh, how much of an hour past three o'clock. So times it by sixty, you get how many minutes past three o'clock. Three o'clock. I'm going to write as fifteen hundred hours because I want it to be clear that that is past midday. So it's in the afternoon, and the nearest minute as it asked is zero three. Okay, we'll do the same for this. So zero point three o three. We'll times that by sixty. And then that is 18 minutes and seven hours past midday is 1900 hours. So that is my final answer. And again, we could be absolutely sure that it's not going to get to that level again before midnight because we did that calculation with the trig extra values earlier. I hope you enjoyed that. Check out my live revision sessions. See you in the next one. Bye for now.